Amen. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Serve a wonderful, great God. Amen. Amen. She's going to sing another song this time. <laughs> now I'll be in trouble. <laughs> nah, that's good. That's good. We appreciate, appreciate the singer. Unpaid, unpaid singer. <laughs> I know. I know, I know. It's a volunteer army, right? God's going to help us. God's going to bless us. But we're thankful we serve an awesome, wonderful God. And I want to preach tonight from the Old Testament, the book of 1 Kings, chapter 20. Verse 28 through 30. First Kings chapter 20, verse 28 through 30. He said, And there came a man of God, and spake unto the king of Israel, and said, Thus saith the Lord, Because the Syrians have said, The Lord is God of the hills, but he is not God of the valleys, therefore will I deliver all this great multitude into thine hand. And ye shall know that I am the Lord. And they pitch over one and they pitch one over against the other seven days. And it was so that in the seventh day that the battle was joined. And the children of Israel slew of the Syrians an hundred thousand footmen in one day. But the rest fled to Aphek into the city, and there a wall fell upon twenty and seven thousand of the men that were left. And Ben-Hadad fled and came into the city into an inner chamber. And we'll leave it as that for now, and there's more to the story as you keep on reading down there. But I want to re read verse 28. He said, And there came a man of God, and spake unto the king of Israel, and said, Thus saith the Lord, because the Syrians have said, The Lord is God of the hills, but He is not God of the valley, valleys. Therefore will I deliver all this great multitude into thine hand. And ye shall know that I am the Lord. I am the Lord. And with the help of the Lord tonight... I want to preach in a message entitled, God Hears Everything. God Hears Everything. Uh, let's look to the Lord in prayer tonight. Marvin, would you please pray, sir? Father, thank you for our pastor. Father, thank you for each soul that's present. Father, let us stay focused, Pastor, minister your word. Father, let us not be here the same way we come. Father, let us uh, take this message and apply it to us like it can do. All things pleasing in your sight, giving you the honor and glory. Father, bless the message and the messenger in Christ's name. Amen. 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 How many of you all know that tonight? That God hears everything. And now I'm preaching this in one different way, and maybe God can speak to you in a, in, in a whole different way altogether. All right, I'm talking about those that speak against God. He hears it. All the enemies that talk against God and try to run their mouth, and say he's only God of the mountain, he's not God of the valley. He's listening. He's listening. But also you can take it in the other way for you as a personal, as an individual. You can say, well, I say a lot of things. And God hears that too. <laughs> Amen. All them good things I say about God, he hears that. And all them bad things I say, God hears that too. Nothing escapes his ears. Amen. He said in Psalms 94, verse 9, he said, He that planted the ear, speaking about God, shall he not hear? And he that formed the eye, shall he not see? So the question is asked by God, if I, God said, if I create the ears, and I give the, this, this, this little thing right here, and the stuff that's inside of it, if I give it the ability to hear and to understand, and isn't it amazing how the ears work? Right? It just uh, can take a sound, and it can... Uh, it can take a sound and it can, it can discern what the sound is. You know, whether it's a musical instrument or a song being sung or somebody yelling and screaming. 
<laughs> God knows it all, right? And he can hear, and, and the ears is able to detect different sound, and it's a genius that can create something like that. And even the hair on your ears, right, they all have a purpose. They're like little antennas that pick up sounds and bring it into here, and I don't know, all the inner workings, the cochlea and the <laughs> whatever all is in there that transfer and send messages back to the brain. I learned it one time in my life, I forgot all about it. But it receives it, sends it to the brain, and discern what the sound is, and, and you can hear it within a matter of time, right? All that happens. I just hit that, and all those things transpire. You heard it just like that, immediately. God's a genius, right? He's a genius, and he made this ears, and he said, if I made it, right, he said, I can hear too. And so he understands and hears everything that goes on. And here in this Bible reading, Israel, the Syrians wanted to, to attack the people of God. They wanted to destroy God's people. And, and the Bible said that God sent his prophet to the king, Ahab. I think it was Ahab at that time. And he, he said, don't, don't be afraid. He said, I will fight for you. And, and they went out and they set the battle in array. And if you read in a little bit before we get to verse 28, we'll read a little bit of it, verse 23 through 27. He said, And the servants of the king of Syria said unto him, Their gods are, are gods of the hills. Therefore they were stronger than, they're stronger than we. But let us fight against, against them in the plain, and surely we shall be stronger than they. And do this thing, take the kings away, every man out of his place, and put captains in their rooms, and number thee an army like the army that thou hast lost, horse for horse, chariot for chariots, and we will fight against them in the plain, and surely we will be stronger than they. And he hearkened unto, the, unto their voice, and did so. And it came to pass at the return of the year that Ben-Hadad numbered the Syrian and went up to Aphex to fight against Israel. And the children of Israel were numbered and were present and went against them. And the children of Israel pitched before them like two little flocks of kids. But the Syrians filled the country. Right? Two little... You know, look out there, and what is this little army going to do? Tiny little army. He said, like two little flocks of kids, of goats, hanging out, grazing in the pasture. And he said, the Syrians filled the whole land. But what they didn't realize was God heard what they were saying. Amen. They didn't realize they were fighting against God. Right? They thought they were fighting against Israel. They thought they were fighting against King Ahab, and if they had been fighting against Ahab, they no doubt would have won, because Ahab was a very wicked king, a very disobedient king, a king that didn't do right. The Bible said there were none that sold themselves like Ahab and Jezebel to do evil in the sight of the Lord. There was none how wicked as Ahab. Later on, there was another one, but at that time, there was none as wicked as Ahab and Jezebel, and you know them, Ahab and Jezebel. Nobody named their kid Ahab and Jezebel these days because both of them represent evil wickedness in the sight of God. And so if they had gone up against Ahab and Jezebel and Israel, no doubt they, they would have won, but they were fighting against God. And you can't fight against God and win. You can't fight against God and prevail. They didn't realize that God was hearing what they were saying. Because, you know, they went up and, and they fought the first time. They fought on the hilltop and Israel defeated them. A small army destroyed uh, the Syrians and many other kings that joined with them. And, and they, they, they destroyed them. They put them to, to, to shame. And they said, oh, God was fighting on their side. And, but this, this God that, that, that's on their side, he's only good for mountain battles. You know, he's only good for the mountain division of the military. No, we serve a God that can whoop up the enemy on the mountain, and he can beat them in the valley also. He can meet them in the, in the ocean. He can meet them wherever they are. Our God is a God of every level. I mean, he can fight. He's the air, he can fight with the, help the Air Force. He can help the Marines. He can help the Navy. He can help the Army. Our God can win battle no matter what the situation is. Because once a person began to challenge God, they're in big problems. 
They have big trouble. They have a, 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 an, an enemy. They have made an enemy that they cannot stand before the God of the universe. And so he said there that the Syrians covered the whole land with their army, with multitude and multitudes of people, horses and chariots and, 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 and footmen and, 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 and infantrymen and all these, uh, all these soldiers coming out there. And these Israel stood before them as nothing. But God was the one that was going to destroy them. God was the one that was going to fight and give them the victory. You know, tonight God can give us the victory when the enemy comes against us like a flood. The Bible said the Spirit of God will be the one that will raise up that standard again him God's God will fight for his people he's listening when the de when Satan said well I'm gonna get them this time hey God's listening when the devil said I will destroy them this time God's listening Amen. he hears everything his ears are open to all that try to destroy his people and he will stand up and he will fight for his people aren't you glad tonight Amen. Amen. you're also quiet like this doesn't even make you shout hey, God's on your side Maybe you're thinking about all the things you were saying that God heard. Maybe all them bad words that came out of your mouth, He's hearing that too. Maybe all them negative things that you've been saying, God's, God's been hearing that. I told you, it's a two-edged sword. <laughs> it will help you in one, it will cut you in the other one. He hears everything, right? So they wanted to fight to say, oh, God's not going to do anything. He's only good for mountain battles. But he can't fight us in the plain. And that's what I read to you there in our Bible reading. They gather in the plain and they came to fight. And the Bible said the Lord fought for Israel. The Lord fought for Israel. They were wrong. The God of Israel is not just God of the mountain. He's God of the valley also. The God we serve, whether the battle is on the mountaintop or in the valley, He's still God. And we should never underestimate the power of God. God knows exactly what He's doing. Don't underestimate the God that you serve. Don't underestimate the God that, uh, that, that fights for us. Don't underestimate the God that, is, that saved us and delivered us. This God that raised Jesus from the dead. Think about it. What is it that he cannot do? If Jesus was able to, uh, to come to this earth, God, the, the Son of God, manifested in human flesh. And the Bible said he destroyed all the temptations of sin. He never sinned. If he can destroy all the, the weaknesses of the flesh, he can conquer it in the, in, well, while he was on earth and then he died on the cross for our sins and rose again from the dead, what more can he not do? You know, when Jesus came out of that grave, he made the one the greatest declaration. He said, all power is given unto me in heaven and in earth. I want to ask you a question. What is it that God can do for us? Amen. He's got the power. Where are you fighting your battle? Are you on the mountaintop? He can give you the victory there. Are you in the valley? Laying down. Oh, Lord, I'm in a valley. Oh, God, I can't take it any longer. I can't deal with this, Jesus. This is way too much for me. It's overwhelming. I can't handle this. Satan, I'm laying in the valley and Satan is just stomping all over me. Why don't you say, come on, God, help me out. Is he not the God in the valley also? Yeah, he can give you victory on the, mount, on the mountaintop, but can he not give you victory in the, in the valley also? Yes, he can. David said, yea, though I go through the valley of the shadow of death, he said, thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. He said, God is with me wherever I am. I just have to remember, he's hearing everything that's happening. He knows when the enemy is overwhelming me. He knows when Satan is, is getting ready to triumph over me, he's been watching and he's been hearing and he's ready to fight. He's ready to send his angels to come to our rescue, to deliver us, to give us victory over all our enemies. Do not underestimate this God that we serve. The Syrian greatly underestimated the God of Israel. They said he's only God of the mountaintop. But like I said, God was listening to them and he he that planned the ears, like I said, shall he not hear? Shall he not hear what the enemy is saying? And shall he not understand what Satan is trying to do? And will he not come to us and help us in our time of need? Will he not stand beside us and fight and defend us against all our enemies? Amen. Anyone that come against us, God will fight for his people because he's always hearing what the devil is up to. You may not know what Satan is up to, but God does. 
right? He sees, he knows when the enemy is coming on the attack and he is ready to defend. We just have to say, Lord, come to my rescue, Jesus. Lord, come to my defense. Jesus, I'm depending on you. I'm leaning on you, Lord. I may not know what the enemy is doing, but I know what God is doing. I may not know what the future holds, but I know God holds the future. I may not know what, the, what I will have to go through in this life, but I know God stands beside me and he will defend me whether it's on the mountaintop or the valley. My God is for me. And the Bible said, if God be for me, who can be against me? Who can lay anything to the charge of God's elect? It is God that justifieth. Amen. He is still God and he hears and he knows. He knows how to fight for his people. What do you think what's going on in Israel right now? Don't you think God is going to stand by them? Oh, yeah. Iraq, Iran, all of them will come. Iraq will come and Iran will come. But the come day, they're all going to run. <laughs> because God, if God, if God is getting ready, he will, when God gets ready, He will begin to pour His wrath out upon the heathens. Amen? And yes, they are heathens. God will pour out His wrath upon them. God is still fighting for His people. Don't underestimate the God we serve. You remember when Goliath went out there and he was blaspheming the God of Israel? Yeah, he didn't realize God was listening to him. When he stood before the army of God and defied them for 40 days, he went out there. Oh, he went out there, Goliath. Give me a man. Give me a man. Give me a man. Is there not a man that can stand up and fight? Give me somebody. He went out there. He said, he said, uh, he was covered in, in all of his armor and, and, and a helmet. And he had a, one that went before him to bear a shield to protect him. He had a, a spear. He, had a, he was well, totally, you know, completely protected. Mighty warrior, big and strong, tall. Six cubits and a span. Right? Cubit is about that long, but 15 inches to 18 inches. So that really adds up to about, what, nine feet? You see a nine-feet giant coming, what do you all do? What would you do if you see a nine-feet giant coming? Run. <laughs> well, now we can take them down. Right? You got other, we have other ways to take them down. <laughs> right? They're not going to prevail in this day. Giants will not prevail in, this, in these days. Back then they could because it was more of a different story, a hand-to-hand. -hand. Well, they had arrows back then, too, I guess. I guess they could have taken them out there. <laughs> but he wanted, he wanted a hand-to-hand -hand combat. But the thing is, he was blaspheming God. You know, he was blaspheming God. He came out there, and he was speaking evil against God. But what Goliath didn't know was God was listening. You know, that's what I'm talking about tonight. God hears everything. Uh, he thought he was there, and he was speaking and running his big mouth. And, and you know it was a big mouth because he was a giant. And if he's that big, <laughs> he got to have a big mouth. It would be weird to be that big and have a little tiny mouth, right? Yeah, that would be kind of weird. But he had a big mouth, and he was, run he was using it. And he's trying to defy the armies of God. He's trying to speak evil against God's people and, and try to challenge him and say, Is there not a man that can stand and fight with me? And God gave him a man. You see, God was listening. There was a shepherd boy named David. Only a boy named David. And David went out there and, and, and he took just five stones. Five tiny little stones. Going out there to face that big giant. See, what the giant didn't know was God was listening. God was listening to what he was saying. And as David went out there, he took that stone and began to swing it. And the stone went out in the air. You know, maybe the Lord gave him some assist. You know, like, you, you know, like, like you're playing basketball and you shoot in the air and get ready to miss. And the guy comes in and kicks it and dunk it. You know what I'm talking about. Maybe David was going a little bit off course. And the Lord said, uh-uh, this one is going to hit. I heard what he was saying. I was listening to that giant run his mouth. I was listening to how he was uh, challenging me and how he was, uh, how he was uh, disdain. He was disdain. Uh, he, was, he was disrespectful to me and speak to me with disdain. And the Bible said that David get slung, slung, what he sling that stone and let it go. And that stone, that stone went straight for his forehead. Missed all the armor. Missed the helmet. Missed the, the coat of mail. Missed the shield. Everything. And went straight for his forehead. Dink. And sunk right into his forehead. Right? That's some force. That was a supernatural force. 
right? You know, it takes a lot of force to sink a brick into somebody or a stone into somebody's head. That was a God assist right there. Amen. Because God was listening. As I'm talking about God was listening. Let me tell you something tonight. There may be a lot of enemies. There may be a lot of people trying to bring us down. God's listening. Amen. God's listening. God, the battle belongs to the Lord. David said the battle is the Lord's. The battle is the Lord. And so as a child of God, we have to understand that God is listening to every word. Our words and the words of the enemies, all. He hears everything. And the Bible said we will have to give an account for every word we speak, every idle word. Right? So watch your tongue. <laughs> Don't get in trouble with God. Don't challenge the Lord. You're not going to win. Us and sinners. None of us are going to win when we challenge the Lord with our words. Right? With our words. And so the, the servants of the king of Assyria that came to taunt the people of God is another story. And it said in 2 Kings chapter 8, verse 35, he said, Who are they among all the gods of the countries that have delivered their country out of mine hand, that the Lord should deliver Jerusalem out of mine hand? Sennacherib and, 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 and then they came and they began to speak against Israel and say, Hey, nobody can save you. Nobody can save you from, from, from the hands of the king of Assyria. We are the greatest army in this, part of, in this part of the world. We can destroy any nation we want to. We have destroyed many nations already. And they came against, uh, they came against Israel and Hezekiah was king. But what they didn't realize what, was what Israel had a king that knew how to pray. And he didn't fight the battle by himself. He went and he prayed. He called the prophet Isaiah. Let's pray. Yes, there are a great and mighty army. But God was listening to what they were saying. And that's the message I'm bringing to you tonight. God hears everything. When the enemy is trying to destroy the people of God, God hears it. You may not hear it, but God is. What should I do, preacher? Stay on your knees and pray. Stay humble before God, right? Stay prayed up. Stay ready at all time. And let the Lord fight your battle because he is hearing everything. He hears when the devil and his, and his angels are whispering, what can we do? What can we set here? What, what scheme can we come up with to, to trip the people of God, to get them to fall? God is listening. Amen. He's hearing all the, all the, the battle strategy, strategies of the enemies. And when the devil comes, out and try to do something if you stay prayed up and stay on your knees and walk with God he said no weapon that is formed against us shall prosper amen nothing that the enemy bring against us shall prosper because the God that we serve he is listening and he will defend uh, his people amen even in the in the in, in, in when the, um, the king of Syria was trying to def defeat um, Israel once again the Bible said all his battle plans God made it known to the prophet Elisha all his battle plans, God was listening. God was listening. When, when God told Gideon to go and defend his people, Gideon was afraid, but he didn't realize that God was hearing all the things that were going on in the camp. And so God said, hey, Gideon, go down to the camp and hear what they're saying. God was listening to all this stuff. He hears everything, and he will defend his people. We just have to remember to stay prayed up and ready with the Lord. Amen? I thought I was thunder. <laughs> That wasn't thunder. <laughs> we, the Bible said in 2 Kings chapter, am I making sense tonight? God's hearing. I know God is talking to you about other things. I already know that. And I know God is talking to you about other things. I'm talking about God is hearing all the battle plans of the enemies. But I know God is speaking to you about other things because he's hearing what you're saying also. Right? And you will have to give an account for those things. Every idle word you'll have to give an account for. So, remember, God hears everything. <laughs> Amen. But I'm preaching about God fighting for His people. God fighting for people. In Exodus, or, or He said in 2 Kings chapter 9, verse 35, He said, And it came, to pass that at, it came to pass that night that the angel of the Lord went out and smote in the camp of the Assyrians an hundred, fourscore, and five and when they arose early in the morning, behold, they were all dead corpses. Think about that. One night. One angel. One angel destroyed 185,000 people. One angel. He said, preacher, I want to see an angel. Not this one. You don't want to see this one. Huh? 
People talk, oh, an angel came to me, you have wings, and so cute. No, no, no. Angels are not to be taken lightly. They are ministering spirits sent forth to minister unto the ears of salvation. They are sent forth to defend and help us. But they are not uh, them friendly little thing that they see in books and all this stuff. These are spiritual beings ready to destroy. Amen? Ready to destroy. And you know the, the income instrument. We'll wrap it up. I'm preaching about God. God is listening. You remember when God sent Moses and Aaron into Egypt? With one simple message to Pharaoh. He said, Pharaoh, let my people go. Let my people go. Let my people go. Just let them go. They're my people. And the Bible said uh, in, in Exodus 5, 2, he said, and Pharaoh said, who is the Lord that I should obey his voice? To let Israel go. I know not the Lord, neither will I let Israel go. See, but Pharaoh didn't realize was God was here and all that. Y'all know the story what happened in Egypt, right? Plague after plague after plague. God began to destroy that nation. Destroyed everything. Destroyed their firstborn, their cattle, their, their land, and their crops, everything. He destroyed boils and sores and darkness and turned their water into blood. And, and it helped them, let them sleep with frogs. Not the way we talk sleep, but frogs in their bed, you know what I'm talking about. And all that stuff, and everywhere, destroyed everything. Why? Because fear didn't realize God was listening. Amen? You know, people say a lot of time, who is God to tell me what to do? Who is God to tell me how to live my life? Who is God? And you can go on and on and on. All these stories throughout the Bible, we see that God hears everything. Amen? Amen. He hears everything. Every idle word that, God, that men speak against God, he's hearing it. He's listening to it. And, 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 and Pharaoh didn't realize, wait a minute now, I'm talking big. I may be Pharaoh, I may be ruler of Egypt, but there is a ruler that is greater than me. He didn't realize that. There is a God that is much stronger than me, and God showed him that day, Pharaoh, I was listening to every word you said, and I will show you who I am, and you will obey me. Amen. And so tonight I'm preaching about God hears everything. As, as people, we need to understand that. A lot of times people are refuse to surrender their life to God. And even in the speak within their heart, saying, no, I'm not going to do that. I'm not going to do that. I'm not going to listen to God. I'm not going to hear what God wants me to hear. But what they don't realize is God is hearing all those things. And the worst thing we want to do is have God as an enemy. We don't want God as an enemy. We want Him as a friend. Amen. We want Him as a father. We want Him as a savior, as a redeemer. We want Him as one who will stand by us and fight for us and not against us. He hears everything. And so tonight as you bow your heads and close your eyes in reverence to the Lord. God will fight for His people. And He is fighting right now for Israel. He's fighting for His people. We've been fighting for Israel the Jewish people, for thousands of years. And He will continue to fight on their behalf. He will continue to be their shield and their strong tower. He will continue to be a fire about them and a wall of protection about them. And He will do the same for us as His people, as Christians, faithful following, followers of God. He will fight for us. He hears everything the enemy speaks against us. And He will try. And all the things that Satan tried to do against us, God hears it and He will help us. But we have to stay prayed up and be humble enough to say, wait a minute now, I need to trust God. I need to trust God. Amen. God bless you tonight. She's going to play and sing as the altar call. What if you spend some time in prayer? If you know your heart's not right with God, you know that's what the altar is for. That's what the altar is for. Jesus already made a way for us. He died for your sins. He rose again to set you free. If you know your heart's not right with God, you can make it right tonight. Don't wait. Tomorrow is not promise or guarantee. Come while the Lord is calling you. I will pray with you. I'll be at the altar. I'll be willing and ready to pray with you. Come, give your life to the Lord. The Lord hears, and He will hear your prayer tonight also. In Jesus' name, amen. Let's spend some time in prayer.
Amen. Praise the Lord. I take the message seriously. God hears everything. So he hears all those strategies that the enemy is trying to do. We just got to stay on our knees. Pray it up. Let's have faith in God. Realize that God is going to fight for us. Amen. He's going to help us. God bless you. Let's have a good week in the Lord. You already have a good week in the Lord? Amen. I don't have my book for some reason, my little black book. I might have left it somewhere, but we made our goal this week. <laughs> we got over 50, you know, and God gave us one new out of the soul when it came out. So sometimes we got to keep pressing on and keep being consistent. And it's a good thing. Trust me, it's a good thing. So I encourage you. I already invited one to this, so add it to this, this week. You know, Lord help us. I prom- I'm planning to go out on Monday and Wednesday because we're going to be gone this weekend. And who knows what all God will do. We're building and reaching and connecting. And it's all kind of great things that are happening, you know. Uh, we went, um, I think it was Wednesday night, and the guy just invited us in his house. He's an Indian guy from India. <laughs> and he said he's Hindu and Muslim. <laughs> I said, how does that work? He said, well, I do my Hindu stuff in the morning. And I do Muslim <laughs> worship in the evening. I said, well, whatever. I said, well, here's Christianity. Here's our card. Now you can give us another one. Maybe this one will open your eyes and make sense. <laughs> and he was like, he was going to, you know, he, he was trying to give us everything in his house. He was like, hey, Jay, what do you, can, you need this? He, snacks and coconut water. And uh, he's trying to feed us and give us all this stuff, <laughs> you know. But we just had a great time just talking to people, sharing the word of God. And, and spoke to a lot of people and just let them know that God is still, and God is still, you know, reaching out to this lost world. Amen. And, and God can help and bless us and help us. So let's have a blessed week. Remember, we have Bible study on Tuesday, 7.30, and um, Thursday night service, and, and we'll see all that God will do throughout the week. Amen. But I encourage you to keep inviting. Let me know Sunday morning, and keep praying. Keep praying 15 minutes a day. Just challenge yourself. Build a good habit. Build a good habit to pray and to soul win, and read the Bible also, even if it's just one chapter. You know, we can't do that one verse thing. That's way too lazy. You can at least read a chapter, right? And get something from the Word of God. Not to be righteous, but just to grow in your faith, okay? That's what it's all about, growing and getting better. God bless you. We'll close the service in prayer. Uh, Marv, would you close this tonight? Father, thank you for all that was accomplished this evening. Father, keep your hands upon us and bring us back to the next appointment in Christ's name. Amen. 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 God bless you.